Hey, it's Brian Johnson, and this is a multi-part video tutorial on installing WordPress in 2014 and really optimizing it to drive more traffic with technologies like Google Plus Authorship, video site maps, and reducing page speed load times, and I'll share how to do that as we move forward. This particular video is how you can auto, or I'm sorry, how you can manually install WordPress, and I'm gonna walk you through that process right now. So number one, to install WordPress on your website, you're going to want to access, let me just get rid of these since we have links already to go. Uh, this link right here, wordpress.org, and you're, notice you're going to want to go to the .org address. .org is for uh, self-managed WordPress websites, and they're much more powerful. You have many more options, and you're always going to want to use uh, WordPress.org versus WordPress.com, which is limiting. You don't have as much power. So you're going to want to click on this blue button, download WordPress. And then from here, you're going to download WordPress 3.8 and save it to your computer. Now I've already done that and I've got the files and I'll show you how to configure the files as we move on. Next, what we're going to want to do, and let me see if I can refresh this page. I just changed this. <clears throat> and let me go ahead and update the page is I changed this instead of cute FTP I changed the FTP program to FileZilla simply because it's free and if you click on this link it'll take you to this page now what the heck is FTP it stands for file transfer protocol and that's a fancy term that simply means sending physical files from your computer to a web server or your hosting account. And the files that we downloaded from WordPress, we're going to uh, upload to our web hosting account. So you're going to want to download that. And next, you're going to want to get your hosting username and password. And the reason you're going to want to do that is because we're going to configure going to move this out of the way a bit. We're going to configure your FTP program to send those files. So what the heck does that look like? Well, it looks like this. This is, um, I'm going to make this window a little bit smaller so you can see it pretty darn good. Now I'm using a different program. I'm using IP switch WS FTP program. Now I'll tell you, I paid for this years ago and that's why I use it. However, today, knowing what I know, I would not buy it and I would go with the free version because they're pretty much all the darn same. But I didn't have this type of a tutorial back in the day and I'm used to using this program, but they work pretty much the same. How does it work? Well, first, you're going to need to use your program and create a connection. Now, it might differ a little bit from what you're seeing on the screen, but generally, you're going to create a new connection and it's going to ask you for the site name, so you might put um, your website here. And next, you're going to um, type in what type of connection. You're going to want to use FTP. And then that site address is usually going to be something like ftp.yourdomain.com. And then next is the username and password that I mentioned. You're going to enter in your username here and your password here. Okay. And after that, you're going to want to uh, click Next, and it's going to show you your uh, configuration, and you're going to click Finish. Now, I'm not going to do that because that's a phony address and a phony account, but it's pretty much how a FTP program works. Now, after you've done that, basically, you're going to send the files to your hosting account. So this is usually what a hosting account looks like. After you've got um, the hosting account set up, you've paid for hosting, and you've pointed your name servers to your host, and if you're not sure about that, you're going to have to point your name servers to your web hosting uh, company. Just search for pointing name servers to host. If you search for, again, in Google, pointing name servers to host, there are a number of videos right here pointing DNS name servers to web host right on YouTube. Just watch that and it'll guide you through the process. And after your uh, domain name has propagated 
throughout the web, you'll see this, which is index of, and there's no files here, so the only thing you're seeing is access to the CGI bin. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and send those files that I saved. So I've saved the files that I downloaded from WordPress, like I advised you, and they're all right here. Let me show you what that looks like. on your computer. So you can see here, I save all my uh, content to a folder I call One Data Backup. And if I scroll down all the way down to the W's, I'll see WordPress, here it is, right? Now I keep all my plugins and themes and uh, snippets of code in this folder, and you can see it goes back all the way to 2009. I've actually been using WordPress's, WordPress since 2004. Now I've got this folder here, which is installed from 2013, and I've got WordPress version 3.6. I'm gonna use a slightly older version so I can show you more functionalities and more uh, tips and training as we move forward. And here are all the files we're gonna work with. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna uh, connect with FTP to the site we set up, right? So here are my sites, and I would simply just click one of these and then I would see um, on the right here, let's actually, I don't know if I can move this up too much, but we'll, I think we'll be okay. I can go ahead and see, and I wanted to get my drawing tools. There we go. I can see the site that I'm working with, it's always on the right, and the files on your computer are always on the left. You can see here it says my computer. Here are all the files we downloaded. So the first step is really pretty simple. You're just gonna go ahead and select all the files on the left, and you're gonna send them to HTML, under, or I'm sorry, to public underscore HTML. And to do that, I'm just going to um, click one of the files, and then I'm going to hit Control, or actually it's Shift. So I'm going to hit one of the files, and then Shift, and then I'm going to go to the top, and I'm going to click the top folder. Now all the folders and files have been highlighted, and I'm going to start sending the files from my computer to my server. And you can see right here we're getting uh, the speed in which the files are being transferred. We've got a progress, and you can see they're all uploading. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna pause while this uploads. It'll take a few more seconds, and then we'll configure the um, setting. Or actually, you know what we can do is while that happens, we can go on to the next step. And the next step is to log into your site's cPanel and to create a database. We're gonna to need to create a database so uh, WordPress can basically uh, communicate with the database. The way WordPress works is the PHP files, that's what we're sending to the uh, server right now, communicate with the database and pull the content out of the database to, to create the pages and posts. So let's go ahead and log in right now to cPanel and I'll show you how to do that. and that's actually the wrong uh, username. So I'm gonna pause this, I'm gonna put in the right username and we'll log in. All right, after you've gone ahead and logged in, all you need to do is access WS, or I'm sorry, MySQL in databases. And you can see here, here are the MySQL databases we have, and we don't have any databases installed. So instead what we can do is we can go to the database wizard right here, right? We'll simply click that link and it will take us to a simple uh, creation system. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and this is what I recommend you do as well, is open up Notepad which I've got right here. And I'm gonna put WordPress database info. Okay, so first we're gonna to need to create a database. 
So I'm going to simply label the database database. And to do that, I just fill this out here. Database. Now, in the next step, we need to create a user. And what happens is the user connects to the database. And if you don't have a user, the database doesn't function. So I'm going to put in user. And now I'm going to put in a password. And I'm just using 87654321. And later I'm going to delete this database and use a different one for security purposes. And after I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and create the user. And now you can see we've got a user building underscore user with password 876. So what I'm going to want to do is copy this line here. And the database is right here, right? So I'm going to copy that. So here's our database name, which is building underscore database. And then the user, if you remember, was building underscore user. And then our password is right here. So I save that to make it easy on myself to configure WordPress as we move forward. Now, before we move on, there's one other step we need to do. And we need to give all privileges to this database. In other words, we need to let the user perform all these things. So we click on this button, all privileges, and we click next step. Now we're all done. We've got a database with a user. It's got all privileges set and we're good to go. I'm going to go to the cPanel home and to do that I just click this. Let's go ahead and see how our files are transferring. So we're about 85% done. We're almost there and we'll continue with the installation. 92, 93, 98, 99, and we should hear a loud ringing in a second. And there it was, it was on the, on the headphones. All right, now there's one other thing we need to do, and that is I wanna draw your attention to the file I've just highlighted. When you open up WordPress, and you unzip it, you're going to have these three folders, and then you're going to have these PHP pages. And notice we have, this is the one I wanted to highlight, WP config sample You're going to want to open this up, and we're going to edit it with our database information. In other words, this is the file that helps WordPress communicate with the database to pull the information out of the database and create posts and pages for your website. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to simply right click on it and you can see it just opened up here. It's very small. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to add in the user base. Give me one second, I'm going to move some things around here. So again, the file we're editing is WP hyphen config hyphen sample dot php and we also want to pull up the untitled file which is the database username and information as well as passwords okay thanks hon so i'm going to cl click on the database name and you're going to find this line here and you're going to enter in database name and then you need to enter in the username and you can see here it says database username so we're going to simply remove that and put in the real username, which if you remember was user. And then our password is 87654321. Okay, now I'm going to click the file and I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to go back to the file program because the file on the server doesn't have this new information. So I'm going to overwrite the file and it says, do you want to overwrite? And I say, overwrite. Now what we need to do is we need to actually rewrite the name of the file. So to do that, I highlight it again. I select operation and then rename. And all I'm going to do is remove the sample. Okay. 
Okay, so all I've done is deleted sample and I have wp config.php. I say okay. And now we're gonna go back to this page. Remember it just said index? I'm gonna refresh the page. To refresh the page, I'm just gonna hit this icon, reload current page, and boom, it's WordPress is configured and ready to go. I'm gonna enter in my site title. So I'm gonna put um, building. This is the title of my uh, blog, and I'm gonna create an admin username and a password. Now create pretty strong usernames and passwords. Doing so will give you a powerful uh, password and username that hackers do not break. I recommend you change admin to something else. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that now, and when I'm done, I'll come back in the next video, and I'll show you how to configure WordPress. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna stop the video, so just create a username and a strong password, and then you're gonna create, uh, enter in your email address, and you're gonna click Install WordPress, and you'll be good to go. I'll see you on the next video in just a minute.